What are the decisions that need to be made by management when there are limited resources available? And how does sales mix affect those decisions? When more than one product is being produced, the company must consider the impact of the sales mix. Sales mix is the combination of products that make up total sales. For example, a company's sales may be made up 70% of lawnmowers and 30% of replacement blades. Sales mix is the term used with regards to the percentage of sales that each product represents. The mix of products sold impacts a company's profitability, particularly when the contribution margin of each product differs. Sales mix is important because companies do not have unlimited resources. Limited resources are also known as constraints. For a company, constraints may be raw materials available to produce different products, the number of hours available on a specialized machine, known as machine capacity, or the number of direct labor hours available, or many other types of constraints on resources used to produce a product. When resources used to produce multiple products are limited, the company must decide which products to produce. They do this by asking themselves questions. What is the constraint, the limited resource, in this company? Of the products which use the limited resource, which products should be produced in order to maximize income? This is determined based on the contribution margin per unit of the constrained resource. Remember, management wants to ensure the company's operating income is as high as possible, and to do that, they have to ensure they produce or sell the products with the highest contribution margin. But what does that mean in an environment with a constrained resource? The best way to demonstrate the impact of a constrained resource and the impact of sales mix is through an example. Electra Limited manufactures and sells three products. Relevant information for the three products is as follows. Product A has a selling price of $450, variable costs of $150, and requires 2.5 machine hours to produce. Product B has a selling price of $600, variable costs of $450, and requires 1.5 machine hours to produce. Finally, Product C has a selling price of $700, variable costs of $600, and requires 0.8 machine hours to produce. Management is considering hiring and training more machine operators and, if they do, they will have an additional 1,600 machine hours. If they are able to do so, which product should they produce? How many units of that product will they be able to produce? To start, let's calculate the contribution margin for each product. Remember that contribution margin is calculated as sales minus variable costs. It's the income that contributes to covering both fixed costs and the desired operating income. Companies earn more income by selling products with higher contribution margin, so let's calculate the contribution margin per product first. For product A, the sales price of $450 minus the variable cost of $150 equals a contribution margin of $300. For product B, the sales price of $600 minus the variable cost of $450 equals a contribution margin of $150. Finally, for product C, the sales price of $700 minus the variable cost of $600 equals a contribution margin of $100. Given the contribution margins calculated and knowing that companies earn more income by selling products with higher contribution margins, it's clear that, based on the contribution margin, the company should sell product A first, product B second, and product C last. In fact, if there is enough demand, the company should produce only product A and forget about producing either of the other two products, given that their contribution margins are lower. Using the contribution margin as the deciding factor is perfect when there are no constrained resources. However, contribution margins can't be used as a deciding criterion when there is a constrained resource. In that case, it's important to determine what the constrained resource is. In this case, the constrained resource is the number of machine hours available to produce the products. Management is hiring and training more machine operators and they will have an additional 1,600 machine hours available to produce more products. The question is, which product should they produce given that we can't use contribution margin to make that decision? Instead, what we need to do is calculate the contribution margin per unit of limited resource. If the company is hiring and training more machine operators and will have only 1,600 additional machine hours, then they should produce the product that has the highest contribution margin per unit of limited resource. 
How is the contribution margin per unit of limited resource calculated? It's calculated as the contribution margin per product divided by the limited resource consumed by each product during production. We can calculate this for all three products. Product A is calculated as the contribution margin of $300 divided by the machine hours consumed by product A, which is 2.5 hours. 300 divided by 2.5 hours is equal to $120 per machine hour. This means that for every one hour of machine time, product A earns only $120. This is the contribution margin per hour of limited resource. Doing the same for product B, the contribution margin of $150 is divided by the machine hours consumed, which is 1.5 hours. $150 divided by 1.5 hours is equal to $100 per machine hour. For every one hour of machine time, product B earns only $100. For product C, the contribution margin is $100. We divide that by the machine hours consumed by making one unit of product C, which is 0.8 hours. 100 divided by 0.8 hours is equal to $125 per machine hour. This means that for every one hour of machine time, product C earns $125. Notice the ranking of products now. In order to maximize income, the company should produce product C first in order to earn $125 per machine hour, our limited resource. If they still have machine hours left over, they should produce product A as it earns $120 per machine hour. Finally, product B would be produced last because it only earns $100 per machine hour, our scarce resource. Here we can compare the ranking by contribution margin per product to the contribution margin per unit of limited resource ranking. Product C has moved from third to first. Note that by using our understanding of how a limited resource is consumed by each product, we are able to maximize the contribution margin for the company overall. To solidify our understanding, let's consider what the company would earn if they used their additional 1,600 machine hours for each of the three different products. To calculate the impact on income, we multiply the contribution margin per unit of limited resource for each of the products which in this example is machine hours, by the total limited resource available to produce the products. For product A, that would be $120 multiplied by 1,600 hours, which is equal to $192,000. So the total contribution margin earned by product A would be $192,000 if we produced only product A with the additional 1,600 machine hours. For product B, that would be $100 multiplied by 1,600 machine hours, which is equal to $160,000. The contribution margin earned by product B would be $160,000 if we produced only product B with the additional 1,600 machine hours. Finally, product C. $125 multiplied by 1,600 machine hours is equal to $200,000 you can clearly see that the total contribution margin earned with the additional 1,600 machine hours is maximized if we produce product C. That's because the contribution margin per machine hour is the highest. If there is no limit to the number of products we can sell of product C, then the company would maximize their operating income by producing only product C. How many additional units of product C could the company produce? We calculate that by dividing the total limited resource available by the limited resource required to produce one unit of the product. In this case, we would take the total additional machine hours available and divide it by the machine hours required to produce one unit of product C. We would take 1,600 machine hours, divide it by 0.8 machine hours per unit, which would allow us to produce an additional 2,000 units of product C those 2,000 units of product C would make us $200,000. What does management have to consider before producing the additional units of product C? They have to consider if there is enough demand in the market to allow them to sell the additional 2,000 units of product C.
If there is no demand for additional units of product C, management would then have to consider producing either product A, the next most profitable product, or product B if there is no demand for product A either. Although the profitability of a product per constrained resource is an important deciding factor with regards to which product to produce, in the end, demand is the final deciding factor. That's it for decisions about sales mix with limited resources. Note that we have walked through the steps to determine which product is the most profitable if there is no constrained resources, using the contribution margin per unit, and which products are the most profitable if there is a constrained resource using the contribution margin per unit of limited resource. Thanks so much for watching.